Speaking of development and methane engines, this is an actual segue, guys. I, right, I'm yeah. shocked. Queued you up. You're welcome. Wow. Um, wait, did you do that on purpose? Sure. <laughs> so ULA United Launch Alliance tweeted this, which is really exciting, um, that the BE-4 engine for their Vulcan Centaur rocket, or basically just Vulcan rocket, arrived at Decatur. Uh, which is where their factory is in Alabama. This is ULA's next generation rocket, which is still on track for 2021. So next year, we're going to see a lot of new rockets flying. 2021 is going to be a huge year for, for space flight because we're going to see awesome. Vulcan's first flight. We'll hopefully see SLS. We'll hopefully see by then. I mean, there's chances of some serious Starship action, maybe even an orbital attempt in 2021. Um, yeah. This is this is pretty pretty big stuff. So this is of course the BE4. Now what's interesting about this, um, the BE4 is made by Blue Origin. So Blue Origin, who will also be using this engine on their new Glenn, makes the BE4 and they make mm -hmm. the BE3 and the BE3U, which is the upper stage variant of the BE3. Um, the BE4 runs on methane, a lot like the Raptor engine. It's big. This is about the same size as the space shuttle main engine. You can't really tell scale here, but it's. It's really, really, really big. Um, I should actually pull up my own website. I have a whole comparison of that versus the RS-25 and stuff like that. Um, uh, maybe I'll find that in a second. But it also, one of the differences between this and like say the RS-25, the space shuttle main engine is they do run this um, oxygen rich in the, in the pre-burner. So don't forget the pre-burner is kind of the, the mini rocket engine that spins the turbine which then they use that to spin the the fuel pump. So that's what powers the pump is that that pre burner, that little rocket engine. And you don't want to, you can't burn it at the perfect um, stoichiometric ratio because it would melt everything in sight. You can't even burn it at a more optimized version because it would still melt everything in sight. So they have to either really make it extremely um, fuel rich or oxygen rich. One of the one of the either or, and you get it so far away from stoichiometric that it ends up cooling and being cool enough to be able to to point at basically a fan you know at a metal bladed thing that doesn't have active cooling and doing it with oxygen is really hard because really hot oxygen tends to also still turn everything into soup like that's just kind of what it does and um the, the russians figured this out though forever ago the soviet union started doing um oxygen rich stage combustion in their nk-15 which was the engine they were originally developing for the N1 moon rocket. So they first started kind of, well, I don't know if that was the first, but that was the first that really started to fly and started to make progress. And same with the NK-33. And the United States, we didn't have the, the metallurgy or the however you say that word. Um, <laughs> we hadn't found metals that wouldn't just get destroyed. And, and we still didn't until like the 90s. And we didn't even think it was possible until we got our hands on some NK-33s after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we bought some NK-33s and, and, and brought them over and Aerojet Rocketdyne basically retooled them and put one up on a stand, fired it off, and they're like, wow, it actually, <laughs> they did it. Like, they couldn't believe it was actually done because they didn't think it was possible to do oxygen-rich stage combustion like that. Huh. Anyway, sorry, long, long story short. No, that's interesting. Yeah, here we are with the BE-4. And from my knowledge, I think this is the first time the United States has really built of i mean because we've done full flow stage combustion in the power head demonstrator or whatever and of course the raptor engine does have one of its pre-burners is oxygen rich that's how that works the full flow uses an oxygen rich and uses a fuel rich side so technically the raptor engine has an oxygen rich uh side to it for uh for a pre-burner but as far as like a, an engine that is considered an oxygen rich closed cycle engine um, produced fully in the United States. I think this will be the first one um, ever because the RS-25 space shuttle main engine, which was also closed cycle, that used fuel rich. And anything else really that we've flown since has been, we've always kind of gone with um, with fuel rich. So this is, this is exciting. This is, um, but one thing I should get back to this. Um, apparently this is a development engine, which I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused by that. Like, does that mean... Um, and it's development as in like the developmental vehicle, like they're going to fly it in development or like strictly development, <laughs> not a flight article. Because the question from, uh, Chloe here was, 
uh, used as test article or for a real flight? And he said development. So I don't know. Didn't really go into details on that. Yeah. He's ULA and Man, Blue a few Origin words. have been very quiet when it comes to the BE4, but um, it's good to see something's being delivered and kind of ready to go. So yeah. I didn't realize BE4 was uh, methane. Yeah. Isn't that crazy yeah. that all of a sudden we went from like no? So here's the real race: is what is, what will be the first orbital rocket that is fully or partially, you know, that is has first orbital rocket to have methane fuel in it? Will it be Vulcan, mm -hmm. which this this rocket will have? Will it be um, New Glenn, which is Blue Origin's vehicle, or will it be Starship, which will be the first one to make it to orbit? We have three going online hmm. in very similar time frame. My bet would be Vulcan, actually, because uh, I, first off, I think Blue Origin will deliver the first two to their customer before it, because it, the um, the New Glenn will take seven of those things. So I think it'd be kind of weird to be like, here, we'll get to you, but hold on. We're going to take the first seven, you know, like <laughs> as opposed to just delivering two for Vulcan. So I don't know. What do you guys think? What What would your bet be? I think it's going to be between Vulcan and uh, Starship. But I think Vulcan may have, I think you're right. I think they may have the edge because, I mean, a lot of what they're doing is traditional manufacturing and ULA has been doing this forever and they've been developing this for years. And, um, and Starship is still like, let's see if it can hold pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Starship is definitely like the, the wild card in this, yeah. you know, like it totally could, and it totally might still take three years. It, I mean, it might yeah. fly orbital by December, probably not, but like, almost for sure not. But you know, well, it wasn't wasn't weren't we going to talk about Starship? Didn't they pass the cryo test on SN five? I mean, is that news? That is, and just before we get to that, let me. Uh, sorry, that was such a nice oh. segue. But let me. I, I did want to. I finally. Sorry, I didn't. This I up. wasn't. You gotta take <laughs> them when you can get them. Park, <laughs> so this is uh let me just promote the... my website real quick hold on <laughs> <laughs> we can't transition yet i haven't gone to everydayastronaut.com uh no but this is you the olfpod.com slash highlights <laughs> <laughs> um this is kind of the chart showing here the um the size of the be4 so um, the BE-4 is quite a bit bigger than Raptor. Raptor is almost closer to Merlin-sized. Mm. Um, the hell the is the F-1? Look at that thing. Yeah, that's what powered what the Saturn, Saturn V. Yeah, that was a Saturn V. Saturn V, yeah. Wow. So, so something that's interesting here. You can so make the a RS, house out of that. So the RS-25 space shuttle main engine is on the right, the far right side of the screen here. Um, and the BE-4 is closer in size to the, to the RS-25 almost. It, it's, a, it's a really big engine. Um, and the Raptor engine is... Is big, but um, you know it's it's almost more the actual diameter of it and footprint. Because look at how the gas generator sticks off that little like side part of the Merlin sticks mm -hmm. off the side. the The Raptor's almost compact enough that it could. It's almost as small, like diameter wise, total diameter of the entire engine as the Merlin. It's it's closer that way than than the the like in that case the BE four is more like RS twenty five diameter size and stuff. So. That's how they're going to fit 31 of those things. Exactly. On the yep. Well, and that's so, kind of part of the okay. whole thing. Looking at this, though, what's the important metric? Because the size of the, it's not the size of the engine that matters. It's the <laughs> thrust. So Th it's, thrust there's a lot of things. The, yeah. the, so the Merlin or one of the, so the, um, oh, here we go. We can tell here too. The, the Merlin's about two and a half times less powerful than Raptors. So like I said, it'd probably take about mm. four Raptors to replace Merlin, like we were talking about earlier um, on the Falcon mm. 9. But the thrust, um, it, the Raptor's almost as much thrust as the BE-4, yet it's uh, quite a bit smaller, and it's thrust to weight ratio. So how much thrust does it produce compared to how heavy is it is 107 to 1 versus 80 to 1. And sorry, the actual thrust is around 2 meganewtons versus about 2.4 for BE-4. We don't know for sure. And the specific impulse, this is how efficient it is, and that's extremely important. That's arguably maybe one of the most important things for right. a sp for a, a rocket engine. The Raptor will be the king here because it's um, it is the full flow stage combustion, and it's about 330 at sea level, about 350 in a vacuum, and the BE4 is about 310 at sea level, and probably around 340 in vacuum. 
we don't have those numbers for sure. But in general, the, I mean, the Raptor engine is going to outperform it um, in, in most measurable metrics because it is full flow. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the BE-4 is still a, an upgrade compared to most other rocket engines, really. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member where you'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.